Hi, and welcome to this short Concept Byte video introducing equipartition theory and describing its relevance to thermodynamics. You will need to understand the concept of degrees of freedom to get the most out of this video. I will also say that equipartition theory is quite involved and this video is not going to cover any of the derivation, just mention some of the results of the theory. So, just as a reminder, the total number of degrees of freedom in a molecule is 3n, where n is the number of atoms in that molecule. Each molecule has three translational degrees of freedom, and if it is linear, there will also be two rotational and 3n minus 5 vibrational degrees of freedom. If the molecule is nonlinear, there will be three rotational and 3n minus 6 vibrational degrees of freedom. Equipartition says that for an ideal gas, each degree of freedom contributes RT over 2 to the internal energy. And so, for monatomic gases such as helium and neon, the internal energy, U, is 3RT over 2. However, for diatomic gases with 6 degrees of freedom, 3 translational, 2 rotational and 1 vibrational, the internal energy of the ideal gas is predicted to be 3RT. Equipartition theory also makes predictions about the heat capacity of molecules. Here, every translational degree of freedom contributes half R to the heat capacity, each rotational degree of freedom contributes half R, and each vibrational degree of freedom contributes R to the heat capacity. However, we can see that whilst this works perfectly for monatomic gases, there is slight variation in the diatomic gases, and this variation only gets more noticeable as we move to polyatomic gases. This is because of the different types of energy level within a molecule. If you recall, translational energy levels are very close together, appearing as almost a continuum. Rotational levels are next closest in energy and vibrational separated by even higher energy steps. In fact, vibrational energy levels are so far apart at room temperature Almost all molecules exist in their ground vibrational state, and it may be that rotational levels themselves are not fully occupied. This can be seen if we look at how the heat capacity at constant volume changes for molecular hydrogen as we increase the temperature. We can see at very low temperatures, less than 80 Kelvin, the heat capacity is constant at 3 halves R, as only the translational energy levels are occupied. As we increase the temperature, we can see that there is a steady rise as the rotational energy levels are being occupied and eventually, at around 200 Kelvin, the heat capacity levels off again as the rotational energy levels become more uniformly populated. If the temperature is increased still further, we again see a steady increase, but we don't see it levelling off as vibrational levels become uniformly populated as the molecular hydrogen has a tendency to dissociate at high temperatures. Another example of this divergence from theory is carbon dioxide. Equipartition theory would suggest the heat capacity at constant pressure should be 15 halves R, about 62.35 joules per Kelvin per mole. Recall that heat capacity at constant pressure is R more than the heat capacity at constant volume. However, at 15 degrees C, this is only 36.61 joules per Kelvin per mole. However, as the temperature increases, so does the heat capacity, and at 2000 degrees C, it is approaching the theoretical value from equipartition theory. I hope that this introduction to equipartition theory in thermodynamics has been useful, and that you now understand some of the limitations of this theory. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in other videos.